First of all, tell everyone your page so they can find you. Where do I start? Melissa Kutrick. That's the page. That's your Instagram page. That's but are there other places the that they can find you? Do you have a website yet or no? Or yes, yes, we have divafinancial.com.au. Okay. Um, and then I have a personal page, just melissacuterick.com.au. Yeah, okay. So um, everyone, please make it a point to visit her page either during the show or uh, after the show um, because the first thing I want to talk about, I need your opinion and your feelings on financial abuse that, has, that takes place and what you're doing about it to help women uh, who have become victims of financial abuse. So share that, first of all. I just want to start there first. I've got other things, but uh, what's your thoughts on that? Is this... Oh, by the way, this is a family show. I, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I had to stick that in real quick before you said something. So just, you see my I just want to throw that out there. Whatever, you know, just want you to know. It's, one of, it's a subject, it's basically a subject that, no one really understands and it's very very hard to prove that you are a victim of financial abuse because it's uh it's, it's concealed and it's concealed by legislation by papers by professionals and it just goes on and on and on so for a long time now um after dealing with my own experience and everything it just became ingrained in me the injustice and the the abuse that was going on so fighting banks and lawyers and accountants and our regulators became actually even more frustrating and um, tormenting than mm. first escaping you know a, a violent situation or an abusive relationship so that's how it started and it's like you know you get in you get involved with a partner or it, whether it's a partnership or whether it's a intimate relationship you can get involved with someone sign documents sh purely because you've been guilted into it sign documents and later discover that what you signed is all on you 
you take liabilities and responsibility for things that is that are out of your control and then it's so hard to clear your name or to actually be heard so that's that happened to you the new... wait did that happen to you of course not it's a family yes, it's yes. a family show <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. There you go. I was just about to shorten your name again, Pax. <laughs> many, many you do. times. Yeah, many, many times. Huh? And and that's the thing, you know. Like the first time, the first time was when I had left a volatile relationship with three kids, and oh. um, I found myself having to fight liquidators. So receivers, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. They were after me because my my partner at the time, the children's father. I'm being very polite. I call him the keeper. So I want you to know, you get an award for being under under caution and filter. Uh, you're self regulating yourself quite well. You're really doing. <laughs> You're really doing great. I am so proud of you. <laughs> so, okay, go ahead. Because this is definitely not your rhythmic way of speaking, to, per se. But go right ahead. No. You're doing great. You're doing great. Somebody's going to benefit from this later on when they play it in front of their I'm, children. And go ahead. You're doing great. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm really, <laughs> look at the really screen. Look at, look at the screen. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to. <laughs> they go like, ha. They've never been so polite. Okay, all right. Never been so polite. You're she's doing really good. No, yes, and you, you're fanning yourself. But go. So I I'll, I I just want to jump in here. I just want to jump in here. You you find yourself in a situation that you didn't plan on dealing with uh, uh, liquidators, but this is <laughs> you're getting so much love on the screen. Uh, they love the new PG version of you. Is what we're saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just yeah. funny. You're you. You, you began to make adjustments and take action and changes. I am going to super duper fast forward to something that I really want to hit on real quick. And I got it pulled up on one of my monitors here. It's a, it's a posting that you have of, uh, I'm looking at either a certificate that you received, um, um, a financial, you were, cert you were certified for something. What was it? Oh, I know for the first time. So my biggest thing was I'm uneducated because uh, that was always a thorn in my side. So finally, for the first okay. time, I'm officially a broker, financial broker. Yeah, there you go. You're I, an, you're so soon. Now, now you went from being financially abused by a knucklehead and a troublemaker, and to and, be and 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 our professionals. And others who you thought you could trust to walk you through and navigate through this financial landmine uh, with you and the three children. And now you are on, you are now, you have now entered the arena to be able to, of the other side. And, and now you're able to help others who have become victims or could become victims, just like you were, as now a financial, a broker now. Now I have to ask this question. Did you ever see that coming? No, I've never. I never did I want to be in that arena. So the, the whole thing, I always say that my life has become, my life is full, came full circle. And, you know, okay. sometimes we go and we say, oh, you've got to find your passion and you've got to know what you want to do. And I think I just fell into everything. And okay. so rather than fighting it, I thought, okay, the only way I can do something and be proactive is mm -hmm. by joining them but doing it differently so right. that's that's sort of why diva sort of segued into the financial sector where we provide advocacy so to go in there unravel the documents unravel the situation speak to the right people show them the actual story because everything's so black and white, but we all know there's a lot of gray and other colors right. mixed in there. So yeah. we're able to then present the story, try and restructure that, find out. And, and I call it a process. So it's life. 
love, identity, finance, and emotions. So throughout my life, I had to deal with going, going to understand or trying to understand all those sectors in my life so that I could be stronger and raise the children and then go out into the world and be someone that I still had to discover who that person was. Yeah. So we go back, we do tax, we do bookkeeping, and then we also do brokerage. So we'll find the right, the suitable financial loans or money, money blueprints that you need in life in order to survive and be independent and never have to deal with feeling guilt. And, and it's that shame and guilt when you have to ask for money from someone. And that can be parents, that can be anyone. We, we become so timid to ask, but we don't realize that we really don't have to ask. After a certain age, you can make money, you can create your own financial destiny and future. And whilst we all say money is a dirty word, it's not. The more you have, the more you can do, the more you can give. I went wrong. You're going to let it buffer for a little bit, everybody. Can you, I'm still here. You hear me? No, you, all right, come on now. Uh, mm -hmm. You said that in the pre-show and I said, no, you don't talk too much. It's not like you broke the internet or anything like that. So, <laughs> so what, what I, what, so what I have to ask you about now is if you're working with other women to help them, that means that this was something that was started in your past because of what happened to you, what happened to you? I know you don't have all day to tell me, but if you had to say, you met somebody who became the father of your children, what, uh, what was it about him that attracted you to him? Been that long ago, is huh? That a Can't, remember. That is, Can't remember. Can't remember. No, wait, is that <laughs> that's, no that's that, is, that is not a trick question that has just become one evidently to you. So, so what was it? What was it about him? What was it about him that attracted you to him? That started this journey with him? <laughs> I, as they laugh on the screen, as everybody's laughing on the screen, go ahead. That's I love the expression that's... on your face. On your face, uh, brother. Go ahead. That's my little one. That's my youngest. Oh, okay. No, that wasn't a trick question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, the show's gone out of control. These people are out of control. Okay, yes, be polite. That's your youngest one telling you, be polite. But 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 help someone else by telling your story, at least this part. What was it that you saw that attracted you to him? Because somebody else is walking this path right now, and they have no idea. Uh, we all, and so sorry to do, say this, but no, we... We walk in our own paths. We walk in our own I get shoes. what you're saying. Right. So, no, I was basically left with a family. I was left with a family at um, almost 16. And um, it just happened. I just became a wife. So I've never really been married. There you go. So when you started this journey uh, of being a mom or, or haven't, by the time you, you became a mom, um, did you feel a sense of not having control over your life at that time or even before that? Or did you have a sense of control and someone took it away from you? You got me there. See, I did not expect this. I so didn't expect this. Are you got? Oh, uh, see, I, you already start. You already. We haven't even done thirty minutes. You already saying I got you. I've got some other got you questions on purpose. These are just like uh, I'm just trying to. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I'm setting up the I, I other questions. Oh, hang on. I should actually say read the book. No, um, no, 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 no. We're gonna we're gonna highlight the book, and then everybody's got to go get a copy. But go ahead. Okay. All right. So. Basically, I woke up in someone else's dream and my nightmare at a very, very young age. So I was a child 
you know, yeah. so there was so there's so much to be said for when, you know, people criticize teen mothers and all that kind of stuff, you know. So let's just say I really didn't get to have much of a childhood. Right. And, and so... so I was left with I was left with a um a family and I just had to adapt. I um wasn't allowed to go back to school. So that's why I say I'm uneducated. I literally did not finish year nine. I don't know what that is in the US, but year nine. Mm -hmm. And um, that's it. I became a housemaid. There you go. I, I became a home engineer for everyone. You became a home engineer for everyone and didn't get a chance to grow the way you could have grown, but yet you're doing awesome things right now. You say you're uneducated. Or oh, I am now. No, no, that was before. That was no before. I, I know. I know you said before. But you are one of the most intelligent, bright, insightful, very discerning women, women, woman that I have met in quite a while. You're a very discerning woman. You're a very understanding person, but you do have a high sense of justice. You have a very, very high sense of justice for people and for things. Sometimes to my detriment. But it is, I... to, the, but it is to the benefit of many other people that learn from you including your youngest one that is here on the screen showing you much love. You have made an impact on people without even knowing that your sense of justice has motivated them to stand up for themselves. Your book, uh, let's put it this way, your, your book needs to be read by a lot of people. So, there, <clears throat> excuse me, so therefore, people need to get your book. Now, I don't have a copy. But I've read enough excerpts to know this much uh, that you I'm going to get a copy of your book. That's one. But that you need uh, more uh, podcasts and other shows to be on to tell more people to get your book. You should just get on their show and go get my book, hold it up and then walk off the stage. Just tell that you should do. You should just that should be the whole that should be the whole show. You're like, OK, today we've got Melissa here. Melissa, tell us about your book. And you should look into the camera and go get my book and then totally <laughs> turn around and set the book in the chair and walk off. And they're like, okay, that's it. And everybody just go like, <laughs> why is your book beneficial for other women to read? Now I could give you my take, but who cares? You're the author of the book. And why and is it why beneficial? I'm go ahead. Quite simply, because if I could do it, any woman can. And that's, that's the whole thing. If I could, anyone can. And against all odds, I, and I've been through all the BS and, and, you know, and I still go through the ups and downs and the scars are always there and I can never put enough vitamin E oil on them to sort of <laughs> right. get them to fade. But... Yeah. If we take those scars and really realize that the muscle and everything else, it's, it's worthwhile and, and you can do it. And the life after all the BS, <laughs> see? After all the bagels and Snickers, go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. After all of that is actually really, really worth it. You won't look back. In, in fact, you know, I felt like a fraud even after writing the book. And really? I never really, yeah. Huh. I never, <laughs> see, I knew you were going to ask that. But I don't understand, why? Why did you feel like a fraud? Because it's ingrained in you. So it's like trying to unravel everything about your um, framework, you know, your scheme, your schema, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So trying to unravel everything, you, you start unpacking and you finally get whole and you think, yep, I've done it, I've achieved it. But then there's a little bit of a fear that comes through when it comes to the point of just getting it out there, just promoting it. I didn't want to be just another story and I didn't want to be, and that was the first title of the book, Another Story, by the way. That was ridiculous. Oh, but. wow. So I didn't, I feel like a fraud because I didn't push it. I didn't launch it. I did the book. I printed it. I did all that. Yep, I've achieved it. I didn't celebrate it and I didn't launch it. And I only realized when I went back to TAFE not long ago, again, so I'm studying now a diploma in community services. Uh, just, so, cool. just so that our government looks at me a little bit differently. It's funny how you have to have this piece of paper to tell people that you are qualified <laughs> at something, you know. So yeah. the only thing we never get is a certi you know, certification to be a mother. We never get that. Uh, I, I never understood yeah. why. We yeah. have to be certified at everything else. It's not fair. So I didn't push it. That's the fraudster that comes out in me every now and then because I feel that there's just this ugliness that still gets stuck. You know, like talking now, even talking now, it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. There's, you know, the ugly twin in me, she comes out and she's, beating me up and making me nervous and, oh, my God, shut up, don't say anything and ugh, all that crap. Was that politically PG? <laughs> Sorry. No, you're actually doing quite, you're doing excellent. And I told you you were going to be terrific and you're, you're beyond that right now. You're more than terrific. Talk to me you for a second. You realize this is like the test dummy. <laughs> <laughs> After this. Oh, man. Okay, we talked about that in the free show, and I almost, I want you to know right now, I almost went and got a mannequin or, or like a dummy or I'm going to make him look like a test dummy and stand him up here and stand off screen and interview you. I really was going to do it and go that way you wouldn't feel like you were a test dummy by yourself. So just consider me your counterpart, your chocolate test dummy. I'm over here on this side of the world, and I'm just your little chocolate, chocolate test buddy. All right, so check this out. I have to ask. Here we go. Does your ugly twin always talk to you on a regular basis every now and then? Does it talk to you uh, when you least ex expect it? What does this ugly twin say to you? When does it talk to you? Tell me more about this ugly twin because I don't think you're the only one on this planet. Okay, we got a little buffering happening at the moment here. A little uh, Australian. Uh, can you hear me? Australian uh, California connection. You still, you still got me? Okay. So yeah, tell but... me about the okay. So tell me about this ugly twin because I think there are others out there that have ugly twins also. What is it like for you? What is your ugly twin like? I have so many. I want to just want to just, okay. So did you get that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understood that. I understood that. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So from a very young age, uh, because you. And everyone's got a story, right? So we know that. But from a very young yeah. age, I was basically isolated almost. I, I, not almost, I was. I was isolated. So if you look at high school, high school with my own upbringing and everything else that's in the book, that in itself I had to fend for myself to a certain degree. But then when the keeper when this person and this family, they, he became my keeper, I really was isolated. So it's almost like the only person you can talk to is yourself. And the only person that's going to give you advice is yourself. So I always mm. say that I always had an ugly twin. And that ugly twin, she was beating down on me. She was telling me how ugly I was. She was telling me how stupid I was. It was almost like he, his monologue always in her and it was that child. So your ugly twin is really your child that's rebelling. I always called it my okay. rebellious side and okay. it's, it's that fear. So, you know, I said to you now that I felt like a fraud. Well, that fraud 
is her telling me, you can't do this, you know, you, what are you thinking? Yeah. You know, who's going to listen? Who's going to do the, it, it's just that, it's just that chatter that we all have. So every now and then I have to remind myself, just to shut up. I was polite. <laughs> and when I tell her to just zip it, like shut up. Yeah. I can then go back to me. Uh, I decided, that I, and that's the thing, you know, like we, we talk about, and I'm really big on, Mental health became such an issue and I always, I hate it because sometimes it becomes the flavor of the month. Yes, that's but unfortunately, true. Unfortunately, it's been an issue for centuries. I mean, you look at some of the, our, you look at, you look at some of the philosophers in life. You go back, even even the Bible, and I even read the Bible. I've read the Quran. I've gone. I've I've gone into Buddhism, Judaism. I became a sponge because I wasn't able to go to school. I wasn't able to get an education. So all I had is my ugly twin, who was sometimes a lecturer, and I had me. And trying to merge those into one person became so hard. It's like you leave a situation and then you have to go and find your personality, find out who you are because we're never whole. As a, as a person, I believe we are never whole. So when you talk about mental health, every one of us has something, mm -hmm. some kind of issue mentally. Every single one of us. This is why I say we all have an ugly twin. We all have that conversation that person in our heads that tells us the opposite tells us the lies that we believe so strongly that we make them true you know mm -hmm. so i used to say and and i don't know if my kids do remember this but even as kids i i had a thing called a puja so we left the relationship well we were taken away which was the best thing that ever happened in my life um, and I had a thing called a puja. So it was, you come home from school, you had to just blurt out everything into this puja, lids on, it's gone. It's out of your system. Wow. Okay. And your, your children, wait, your children had, your children had that yeah, as well. They had a purger. They, that's what they well, used. Okay. That was my thing. You know, it's like, I look right. back and I, I, have, I look back and I think to myself, I have no idea what upstairs was thinking about making me a mother, but he did. And these children, they chose me and I just had to be the best I knew how to be. But Hey, I had no manual and I didn't really have a role model to look up to. So I may have screwed up, but that's okay. They turned out fine. So then I could write a book. They I love you. Actually... I can tell. I can tell they love you by what they say on the screen. So. Oh, they're the best. And um, I remember my first one was my eyes. So when he was born, he became my eyes. I really saw life differently. The second one, she was born on my birthday. She became my heart. And the baby, she was my soul. And I... Apologize right now if I put too much pressure on you. Apology. Do you see what's on the screen though? I know we were having some little buffering issues no, no, here. Not really. But but do you see somebody do you see that just fine with a question mark? I, I think they want a little bit more. <laughs> they want to say that they're awesome. So, so <laughs> they love you. It's obvious <laughs> they love you. Vodafone are having technical issues in Australia, just FYI. Yeah. Oh, well, that's fair. But uh, you got, no, I'm just saying, while you're talking, you're getting, <laughs> she goes, she says, I'm awesome. Your daughter says, <laughs> she goes, just fine. She's like, what kind of statement is that, mom? She's like, I'm awesome. So, <laughs> and you also taught them how to be humble. It's obvious you taught them so much about humility. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So she's got a great sense of humor. And I wonder where she got that from. Oh, let me guess, mom. So you you have done an excellent job, no doubt. Uh, but when it when it and listen, no, you're gonna go ahead and say something before. 
Uh, please, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was about to say, the best thing that you could ever achieve or strive for is that your children become better than you could yeah. ever be. Of course. And that's yeah. what makes me proud. Yeah, that is but true. Yeah. Now, I, uh, uh, okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, you went back to school. Yeah. You posted that you went back to school. And I, I noticed, I noticed that when you did that video of going back to school, there seemed totally different than a lot of your other videos because it was just almost like a deer looking in the headlight kind of thing. <laughs> but yet you're like looking at it like, I'm going to go do this. But you also had that sound in your voice like nothing's going to stop me. What was it like going back to school? It, and this is the thing. It's not like it's university or anything. But um, for me, it's huge because even more than getting this certificate, it was a bit of my teenage teenager in me that finally got to do what she wanted. I so wanted, I wanted to be a lawyer. Was that the I ugly so twin? Be... Was that the ugly twin? Teen is that the oh, teenager or ugly twin? No. She's gone. Okay. Okay, got it. Go ahead. She's gone. She only pops in. She only pops in. She's the naysayer in our heads. Oh, you know? okay. Got it. She's full, she's full of the lies and the BS to sort of keep you back where she's comfortable oh. and that's the thing you know whenever we're whenever we're trying to do something whenever we're trying to do something or whenever i'm trying to do something she'll pop in and she'll be a real bitch and i say this nicely beautiful intelligent tenacious confident <laughs> and happy did you did you just give a definition to okay so the ugly the ugly twin is not a nicey. She's not a she's not a team player. She doesn't believe in teamwork. It's just she wants to knock down everything that you're trying to do to move forward. But you went to school. Yeah. You so, achieved you achieved what yeah. you wanted to do, right? Yeah, going I, I went back and I finally can say I've I'm going to school. It was like well, I'm going to school. Even at 50, <laughs> yeah, but I'm that's going kind of the way the video went. The way the video went was like, I'm going to school, <laughs> and I was, I was, I was enjoying it. I'm just letting you know, I was enjoying it because it was like I was so happy for you because you were like, I'm gonna do this, and then this <laughs> this thing kicked in your head was like, like you said, I'm going to school, and like I'm really gonna go do this, and it's like, okay, let's go do it, <laughs> and it was like I was so happy. That was cool. It was cool. Thank you. Uh, I, okay, so can I can I, can I ask you this now? Uh, because um, to find out more about Melissa, you need to go to her page, and you need to co connect with her and talk with her, especially if you need support or a sense of direction when it comes to financial abuse. And, and uh, you need to get the book. Please pick up the book. Uh, but I, I have to ask you about the diva part. Now, you okay. came up with something, and it's a name for what you're doing. Um, you still there? Uh, I'm getting some yep. feedback there. I don't know what that was. Yep. So, um, Diva, D-I-V-A, is the name of what? Diva, is, Diva Financial is the name of the business. And when you look at it, I always find, see, again, I end up, taking on challenges I never do any it seems like I never do anything the easy way and um, as much as be previously that used to be a pity party at times uh, um, and we all go through it we all go through it yeah we all go through the why me and all that BS and whatever yeah. else but yeah Diva is determined independent vital attitude yeah. And it's not a prima donna, you know, it's, and I, I, I laugh sometimes when you see some of the most amazing performers turn around and say, I'm not a diva. Well, yeah, you are. You don't want to be a prima donna, but you want to be a diva. A diva is a goddess. That's it. 
a diva is a goddess. If you really look at the meaning of it, I think it's a Latin word for goddess. And, you know, someone just put a spin on there and decided that a diva is a prima donna. Well, she's not. And to be fair, all men are divas. They... Well, I, I, I've been a diva. I was a diva. That's why the show was running late today. So anyhow, I had to get my hair done oh, and everything. See? But God... Yes. <laughs> wrong attitude. Wrong. Wrong. Oh. Oh, come on now, let me let me have my wrong attitude. That was my that was my ugly that was my ugly triplet. I don't you have an ugly twin. I got an ugly twin. I got a, I got a, I got a triplet. I got, okay, so diva financial is is where people go ahead. I'm 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 interrupting. I'm be, I now I'm being a prima donna. No, 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 no. You're no, you're not. You're making people laugh on the screen though because you're doing really great. You know, for a first time we're doing a live, you're doing really good. Uh, so, no, no, go ahead. You were going to say something before I go to this next thing I was going to ask you, but go ahead. I, I was about to say, you said triplets, and it's funny because I was just talking to someone the other day, and I said, we have, we have, an, old, we have an army in our heads. That, that's our thing. We have an army in our heads because we have so many conversations going on at the same time. It's not funny. So how do you explain? expect to resolve anything you know it's like and the lovely lady there you're a natural male thanks <laughs> um she would know <laughs> that we get some um we get some matters and some stories that are so unbelievable so unbelievable and these are people that have virtually lost everything so when we speak about when we speak about life yeah. when you break up the love why you do certain things you break up the identity what made you do stuff you go into the mm -hmm. finance and then you go into the last bit the emotions once we unravel all of those they can then calmly understand why and how they got to that position so when you look at life, when you look at life, remove the emotion first, mm -hmm. deal with the facts, yep. go into your identity during all that time, and then go back to love. So it's, it's life. I, that's why I said I actually, I actually registered that because life is those four components. And so diva life, became what I went through, what I experienced, the people I've come across and had to fight against, and then the results that came after it. So when the book came about, it was my life and more. And I'm sure, you know, my, my kids will have their own, their own stories. It's just interesting that they never knew what I went through as a child, becoming their mother. And that's the thing that we all do as kids. You know, I'm the first one that always used to say kids are overrated, but we were kids too. That means we are overrated as well. You know, trying to explain that to someone before they sort of throw daggers at me was hard. And I want you to know, I want you to know, I own no daggers I to throw at you <laughs> at all. And I don't and uh, fun that goes through the screen. <laughs> uh, I don't I I don't live my life like that. I try to I try to stay peaceful. But um, okay, <laughs> so um, I want to make this clear to um, your children uh, or or your child that is here that you are indeed overrated, but you still are awesome. Okay, so I just want you to know that you. <laughs> she wanted to make sure we understood that she was awesome. But I understand, I understand thoroughly what you're saying. Uh, you have given much thought to a number of things that we've been talking about so far, but I want to pick your brain on some other things before we have to go. And what that is, I want your opinion, okay? I want your, your, your filtered opinion. No, I'm kidding. I want your opinion on health, on your health. 
why is health so important? I'm just I'm piggybacking some some videos that you've done, but just for everybody, uh, where do, where does Melissa stand when it comes to taking care of ourselves? Melissa didn't take care of at all. And um, Melissa, at a very young age, um, had an, a biopsy on a brain tumour and has so many tubes and wonderful things throughout her body and should have looked after herself. And as much as I could turn around and blame the keeper and raising children, not having time, all of that stuff, I neglected myself. Mm. So someone up there, my CEO, he looks after me so well. <laughs> I have to thank him all the time, all the time. Because, yeah. hey, I realise that health is, so, so important. I was blessed that I didn't realize what it was back then. You'll, it's in the book. But I would always manage to breathe to, and now it's called meditation. I say that. <laughs> <laughs> you are too funny. You, hey, you know what? That's, hey, somebody's got to market something to make money. <laughs> so, uh, okay. But you know what? I, it's like I never knew any of this. I wasn't, I wasn't. I wasn't able, I didn't have the access to learn about any procedures or anything, but I would always end up breathing to calm myself down, but also to absorb the pain. So I had regular, I had really chronic pain. I had headaches all the time to the point that I became nauseous and I'd be vomiting and, and all sorts of things. I'm, I'm sort of dumbing it down and, and, cutting it short but when you have a time bomb in your head mm. you start to realize that okay you got to start doing stuff so I'm getting up at like ridiculous o'clock and wow. exercising and doing things that I should have possibly done earlier so mm -hmm. I'm just grateful that I had the mechanism to to manage and to keep my mind healthy and my body healthy as well back then mm. by breathing, by accepting everything that was going on in my body. I didn't fight it. So I didn't make the disease worse. I didn't. Um, and that's the thing. I think that's a problem. We focus so much on our exterior, what our mm. body looks like and everything else. But the whole thing is, it's what's your body feels like and I got to a I got to an age where I started feeling so old and so immobile and that vitality in me went and I realized that I neglected myself I took my health for granted so I think health is so so important without it we're nowhere you can dream all you want but without health you're not going anywhere you you have made it a point to uh um, to help people with financial abuse. Um, you understand the depth and the, the craziness that comes with domestic abuse and violence. Uh, you understand a number of things, and now you just shed light on why it's important to take care of our health. I need you to tell me something. What about the times that it's hard to get out of bed? What if somebody is struggling to get out of bed? What have you done when those times are tough? Found a reason, basically. And there's always a reason. There's always a reason. I was blessed. I was blessed that I had three children because I think without that motivation, without that responsibility, many times, Pax, I never would have gotten out of bed. And then it became, you know, that rocket ship. And I think um, 
Mel Robbins actually does it now. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Except I just used to go three, two, one. <laughs> because if I stay for the other. <laughs> you don't want to start at five. You go like, I'm not starting at five and four. I'm just going to go three, two, one. And let's just yeah. do this. Okay. I literally All right. had to. Three, two, one. I'm alive. Three, two, one. I'm alive. <laughs> I'm three, two, one. There were times, and, and I wrote this many times, I used to dread the sun rising because it meant I was still in this life. And then things changed. I realized the sun rose, it was another day, and it just meant I could do something different than the day before. And I think that's the thing. You need to want to make that change. But, yeah, three, two, one, get out. Three, two, one, get out. Because if I stayed for the other two, I would be sleeping. I would not want to wake up. Yeah. The other two, you would probably never get to, to the number two if you started at five. You'd probably, yeah, be back to sleep by the time you got to three. All right. So, okay. So when it comes to setting, set the challenge. Set the challenge. In one of your videos, you highlighted that, to set the challenge. What do you mean by that? When you find something that is bigger than you, that's a massive challenge because you get to the point where you strive for it, you'll fail. And sometimes when you get knocked down, it's so much easier just to stay down and not get back up and not remember all the amazing things that you've already done, you've already achieved, and you know you can do it. So then set the challenge bit by bit and you'll do it because after that one challenge, everything else is easy. I always used to say, and I do this a lot, I use, I'd freak someone out to the point that they'd be so scared because as soon as they do it, they think, oh, this was easy. You are so full of it. This is easy <laughs> because it's our minds. You know, our minds, it, it, it's amazing the brain and um instead of me saying my brain was sick i just used to and i still do i say i have a couple of them and they are making me so much smarter <laughs> but it's true uh, that should be a diva shirt i have a couple of brains and they're making me smarter diva financial <laughs> just like <laughs> Call for more brain information. That's what you should do. Call for more brain, you know, speed dial. Uh -huh. Put us on speed dial if you need an extra brain. We have a third one. It's just kind of, you should just, that should be all your marketing for Diva. Just, you know, you know, all right, don't mind me. Bad marketing advice for me. Okay. Well, the ugly twin in your head um, is something that you've uh, struggled with. Have you ever had someone in your life outside of the keeper that crossed your path? that wanted to hold you back from the success and progress that you've made so far. How did you deal with someone like that when they just popped up into your life? Have you read the, have you read the book? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You need to leave me alone on the book because I could be pulling stuff out and then you're going to know my secret of how I'm doing my show. So, so just, have you, <laughs> what is she yeah. putting on? Lisa putting on the screen and your daughter. What is it? 1300. What? Oh, 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 that's, that's the phone number. Okay, that's the way. That should very good. Way to plug it. Way to good plug market. it, Dio. Oh, <laughs> way to marketing person, man. That's pretty good. I would have done the same thing, though. I'm just telling you that right now. I would have. Way to go. Just keep. Hey, just every few seconds, put that number. Keep putting it back up there. It'll, you know. All right. Uh, <laughs> so somebody crossed your path. They're a troublemaker, knucklehead. They're the twin of the keeper. They're, they're similar to somebody else in your past. How do you deal with that uh, reoccurrence of a troublemaker crossing your path trying to hold you back? What advice do you give to somebody that goes through that? Stay true to yourself. So the thing is, I found that, um, and again, I didn't actually published the book until after so many events. So it's not like something happened and then I wrote a book. It's like mm -hmm. I've been there, done that, and came out the other end. So here it is. So I protected myself 
stupidly sometimes, but I protected myself and didn't get into a relationship. And um, that again in itself was a promise I made to my three mm -hmm. little ones. But I came across a very creative, and I know we throw the word narcissistic, narcissism yeah. around so much, but he was so um, obvious but not. And I say that now because when you are out of the situation, you can actually see all the little traits that yeah. I should have picked up on, except yes. your ugly twin who is so captivated by the old framework and who constantly mm -hmm. has constantly has the lies that she has created into her truth, she overrides those, you know, the gut feelings that we have. Mm -hmm. Right. They are real. Those, those emotions in your body are real. They are telling you what is good, what is not good for you. But we override that with BS that we've known. So it's, a, it's that, that same old pattern that you used to be comfortable with and I say that, and this happened years and years, maybe 15 years after I'd been away from it, away, wow. from the intimate, away from the intimate part of it. And this is why I say, you know, as much as we all say that we'll never do it again and, you know, you can never go back there and all of that, we can quite easily because mm -hmm. we, have this, we have this innate ability to go back to habits go back to a familiar comfort good bad or indifferent that comfort is there and you can find yourself stuck back there without even realizing then comes the fear the frustration how do you get out of it going back to your foundation while you're with someone living with someone who is clearly taking advantage who is clearly gaslighting you at every turn who is clearly making you feel how you used to feel as that young, young you, that young person that was actually violated. So, you know, we talk about, I always say that there is nothing anyone could possibly do that I have not overcome, that I have not experienced. There's maybe a few, but I don't want to mention it or draw it to myself. Hmm. But, but. Even though that has happened, even though we know better, we know better, we can find ourselves stuck, so stuck in a place that we should never have been. Mm -hmm. And I say that I had to fight myself before I could realize what the hell are you doing to yourself? It's punishment. It's going back into that, into that jail yeah. cell that I created when I was a teenager. I find yep. myself with him. All over again. There's the abuse, financial abuse, the emotional abuse. He wasn't physical, and this is the most dangerous kind. Yeah, right. Yeah. Go back to your foundation. Go back to yourself. Go to your gut feeling because sh that gut is not telling you any lies. It's warning you that something's not right. Don't mm -hmm. let the conversation in your head override what your body is telling you because we all know, we all know you can meet someone and just have that feeling mm -hmm. either trepidation, some sort of fear or happiness, you know, the energy and yet we convince ourselves that it's not. So I think that was the most important thing when I finally got back into my body and realized how I felt, not how I was thinking or creating the feelings, mm. then I was able to pack the stuff up, put it at the front door and get rid of him. And the you, thing is, uh, Pax, this person, no, wasn't, this person wasn't anything to me, wasn't the children's father, wasn't anything special. He just came and never left, almost like, a repeat of what had happened. Wow. Okay. Are you talking a decade and a half after the fact came in? 
Yeah. And he pretty much could be the twin of what caused the problems and trauma in the first place. That is pretty much. That's like a whole nother show I want to do. Now I got so many questions I want to <laughs> ask you, but we're going to have to stop today. But listen, that's crazy because I get, I get messages from people who went through something like that. And they often ask me to have people on to tell that part of their story. Now, I've just got to ask you before we have to go. When this person was a part of your life, how quickly did the things you didn't see at the very beginning with the keeper, you started seeing maybe quickly or not quickly? I, I'm just asking. Did you start seeing things quickly and went like, okay, something's not right here? And your gut trying to tell you? Or did it take a while before it kicked no, in? No, if I'm to be honest. And, and I went through... <laughs> Pax, I went through when you say after. no, you mean no what? No, no, you didn't see it right away, or no, it didn't kick in. No, 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 it kicked in quick. The Get feeling it. Okay. was okay. there. The, that's the stupid part of it all. And and again, I didn't need an abuser. I didn't need a perpetrator. I was beating right. myself up. Yeah, right. I get you. That's right. You go. I got. I got that job. You said I got that job already. I don't need another one coming. Yeah, that, that was so. <laughs> But that's the thing, you know, that, that is the thing. We, those feelings, the unease was yeah, there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden. Right, it was there. It was I, there. I then all of a sudden go back into the comfort of before. And then that fight, defensive, uh, passive, submissive, just keep it down. Like keep him calm, keep him happy, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And right, man, right, it was right. A, roller coaster but but it was that final piece of the puzzle that I needed to experience because for so long I used to wonder how is it what is this battered wife syndrome there was that ugly ugly um, judgment or there was this ugly category that people would place women and I never understood it. Battered wife syndrome does exist because it doesn't matter how far along you've come. If you don't heal the wounds inside and you don't become one with yourself. And I love my daughter. I can just read what she yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I have, I have not interrupted you, but she's been laying some good stuff out there on the screen. And, uh, and, she, and she does. <laughs> po very, Tom, very Tom. bright, very bright, intelligent woman. That's good. What she's putting up there is very good. You were saying. Trauma in itself needs to be healed. But the thing is, and that's, that's one thing I did not do. And many women don't do. Hence why Diva Financial came about. So Diva Academy teaching, which is workshops. It's all about understanding and learning from my mistakes, but I still came through it. So thank you, whoever, but thank you. <laughs> but that's the thing. I had to understand that it doesn't matter at what age. If you don't go through the steps, you are likely to repeat that cycle constantly without meaning to and realizing and your your twin's going to kick in and she's going to defend yeah, it and appeal right. it and go yeah. back to that bs and blah 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 this is this is the most challenging thing i think i have ever been through uh doing a show with you has been the most challenging thing i've had to do since i've started this uh family project with my daughters to do this because i want to keep talking to you but i am up against the clock and this is the most I've ever gone. And I have to literally end this stream, uh, even though people are still coming on. And you're just, I, you're totally captivating me. I want to just keep listening to you. Will you please come back another time that we could work out for you uh, to come back? Will you do that? I, I never do this in public, but I'm doing it to you. Will you come back again, please? Another time? I'd love to. Okay. Because you, I, I've got to put... <laughs> and you're, you know what? And your marketing people have been doing a great job at putting up information about where, how to contact you and everything. They're just doing so great. Uh, people are saying don't stop, but uh, I, I literally have to stop. Uh, I need to. I need to stop now. 
uh, and uh, it, we're having a buffering issue there. Uh, can you still hear me? You still hear me? Okay. So please go to Melissa's page. Uh, I will be referencing it even more. Um, we are going to uh, talk hopefully with another week, within the week, to figure out another day that you can do it, maybe next month or whatever the case may be, because I am totally not done. I got so many new notes that I'm going to have to go make after we get done. Um, you are a beautiful source uh, of life and uh, divaness and uh, your journey uh, that you're taking now supersedes anything that has happened before because I know you have touched lives uh, that you have no idea that you've done so. Uh, please get the book, everybody, that will see this download. Uh, I'm going to upload it and that will download it later. And by all means, please leave your door open to come back uh, on this show again uh, because you will forever have a chair, uh, a guest chair, uh, on any of my platforms uh, because I love listening to you and I love uh, learning from you. So thank you so much today, Melissa. I better stop talking or Instagram's going to totally cut me off and I'll never be able to upload it. So uh, we'll see everybody later. I love everybody for being here. You are a beautiful woman and uh, may, may you never change but continue to grow and uh, go do your diva thing. I'm so happy to have met you and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you. You were awesome. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Tex.